Today on Judge Faith, being a pastor doesn't always mean you have to turn the other cheek. She stopped the work, okay? She didn't say you're terminated, she didn't stop it. She left molded installation behind new material. All three walls had black mold. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what's happening here. And later, a horse trailer is taken hostage and a friendship destroyed. Okay, and I wasn't gonna interrupt, so, but no, that's not true. She called me and said, I cannot care, get insurance on the trailer because it's not in my name. That's, oh my that's not okay. No. That was okay. not okay with me. She's not covered because the insurance is in your name. Do you understand? Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Vanessa Taylor says the defendant failed to finish the job after dropping the bathtub down a flight of stairs. She is suing for a refund of the bathroom and shower repair. Defendant Andre Willis says that the plaintiff stopped his job and hired another contractor because he didn't give her a pastor discount. He is countersuing for the value of his sheetrock tools that were taken by the plaintiff. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, we have Taylor versus Willis. Thank you, Barbara. Mm -hmm. Vanessa Taylor? Yes. You are suing the defendant, Andre Willis, for $480. You want to be refunded for work that he did in your home, in your bathroom and shower? Yes. And you are countersuing, sir, for $250 for the cost of a sheetrock tool set? Yes, ma'am. So I understand you hired the defendant to do some work in your home and the two of you had an agreed upon price. And at some point, the defendant says he found some black mold yes. in your bathroom. And so he came to you and you signed a new contract with an additional price they would cost for those additional repairs. And then somewhere along the lines, there was a breakdown in communication and you terminated his services? Yes. And so, Mr. Willis, you were at Home Depot, you have a conversation with her, and she tells you there's an issue with her bathroom. Right. Okay, so then you go to her home. Right. And you inspect the bathroom. Right. And the two of you enter into a contract, right? Yes. Tell me what you discussed with him and what type of work he was supposed to do for you in your bathroom. So we got there, I told him that I knew mold would be there. So he did his assessment, no measurements or anything, and he just said that he can do the job. For how much? For $400. Okay, do you have a contract, do you have a copy of the initial contract that the two of you signed? I do. So the total price was $400, and what was your understanding of the work you were supposed to do, sir? Well, she told me yes about the fact that she thought water was getting behind her, but no idea that it might be mold. Well, might be, may not be, it wasn't, you know, a big issue. Um, how long the water was running, I don't know. But when we got into it, we tore the, the tile off the wall, and all three walls had black mold. That's when it got to be, it become not a small issue, but a much larger issue. So <laughs> he removes the shower area, and you say it's covered all three walls with black mold. Yes, ma'am. And do you show that to her? Her daughter, yes, her daughter came, and before I went any further with the work, I had her daughter come take pictures of the black mold sent it to her to her job, and she wanted a five-finger discount or the preacher's discount or whatever kind, because it, 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 Well, wait, what is it, the, why do you say she wanted a preacher's, are you a preacher? I'm a pastor, okay, okay. so, so she, <laughs> show, she, 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 she shows up at my church with the, you know, the, 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 you know, the sad eyes, you know, I'm a single mom with five kids, <laughs> and I need, I need this work done, so I go, of course, I, I go over and take a look at it the day before, she came over to my church Sunday, you know, hallelujah, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> 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 we got to the house. And then when you found the black mold, he went to you and he, said it's going to cost more now because of this black mold issue, and it's more labor, it's right? It's more labor, more, more material. How much did he charge you once he found the black mold? $600 more, which okay. I thought was 200 That's why I signed the new contract. Well, let me see the new contract, because the two of you, so there's this first contract for 400 When it's black and white, you have time to read it. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mr. Willis, Mr. Willis. How are you going to thump something? You had 24... I, I emailed that contract to her. It's not like I gave it to her and said, here, sign it real quick. You know, I sent it to her. She had time overnight to read it, digest it, 
I get an understanding this is $600 over and above what and it's still $400 less than what she should have got charged. Pastor Willis, Hello. I understand what you're saying. I understand. Your I can definitely tell judged. you're a pastor, sir. She should have called me. Okay. <laughs> So, so ma'am, we have this, we have this new contract you thought had been completely replaced by this second contract. Right. And that $600 was the total price that you would be paying. Right. So here's what it says. It says here that you will pay an additional deposit of $300. Did you pay another deposit? 230 When you signed this contract, you paid an additional deposit of $230. Yes. Okay. And then the contract says that two additional payments will be made. $150 on the 5th of September. On the 5th of October, another $150. Right. Were you confused about that? No. Okay. So the new balance, $230 plus $300, which is a total of $530. Hello. <laughs> Is it just that you didn't want to pay the extra money? Because this is pretty clear. Coming up on Judge Faith, Andre had to go to the hospital. And he said he smashed his thumb between the tub and the wall. They put me in the hospital for two days. Did she care? No. Did she call this chuck on me? No. And later, friends don't treat friends that way. I how never is that? sent a tow truck well, to you, it's Angela. It's funny how the tow truck shows up. And I had proof of this with one of my neighbors. Oh, my a God. A tow truck shows up after you threaten to take it. Plaintiff Vanessa Taylor says her contractor failed to finish the job and is suing for a refund of the bathroom and shower repair. Defendant Andre Willis says that the plaintiff took his sheetrock tools. He is countersuing for the value of his tool set. How many days were you working in the home? About five days. Okay, what happened? You say somehow you got injured. Okay. We got the tub out. The tub is coming down a flight of stairs and it crashes on my hand. And it put me in the hospital for two days. Did she care? No. Did she call this check on me? No. When I finally got my hands straight where I could go back and finish, she decided not to answer the phone. And she won't let us come in to finish the job. You have a photo of your hand? Yes, I have a photo of it. Look at my Look at that. In trying to go back to finish the job, she had. I did tell she, you to come out the contractor back, was there. Uh, hold on, I'm talking about But you now. didn't want to do talk, that. I let you talk. Time out. Time you did not want to do that. Okay. Miss Taylor, Miss so, Taylor, hold on a second. My matter of fact, she has my tools to this present moment. Okay. Do so you have his tools? Jobs I that I've been trying to do. Why do you have his tools? Do. Because he wouldn't come get them. Knowing the type of person he is now, I told him no. But I'm not gonna hold your tools hostage. Please. You have to come talk to me. Okay, so you are holding his tools hostage. I'm basically. not holding his tools. I Ma told him. If you I, if you want to fire him, him, no, let me finish. If you want to fire him mm -hmm. and hire someone else to do the work and bring him to court. That's mm -hmm. your right to do that. But what you can't do is keep his tools to try to force him to do anything. That is holding his tools hostage. Do you understand? Okay. And you have no right to do that. Okay. The issue is he had a right to come in and finish the work, and you didn't allow him to come in and finish the work. You have the burden of proof here. You have to come into court and prove to me that he should refund you $480 for the work that he did, the labor that he did. Based on all the testimony here today, I think he performed that work. I think he did it. But you wanted someone else to come in and finish it because he was injured and he missed four days. So I'm not going to order him to refund you $480 for the work that he did. I think he earned it. I think he did the work. It was your decision. You wanted to get somebody else to come in and finish the work. And I believe him when he says that you told him not to come back. You don't have a right to keep his tools, though, in any event. If he finished the work or not, if you're going to bring him to court to sue him, you want to send him text messages, cursing him out, whatever, but you don't get to keep his tools. I didn't curse and him out. You don't get to keep his tools and hold them hostage. Judgment in this case for the defendant, $250. Thank you. Good luck. Plaintiff Joanne Business says her friend bought her horse trailer, but then broke their contract by not paying. She is suing for the remaining balance owed on the horse trailer, plus past insurance costs. Defendant Angela Bradley says that because she does not own the trailer, she shouldn't have to pay for the insurance. She is countersuing for the title to the trailer and lost wages. 
Okay, Joanne Bisnett. Yes. You are suing the defendant, Angela Bradley, for $1,038, the amount you say she owes on a horse trailer and failure to pay some insurance payments. Yes. And Ms. Bradley, you are countersuing for $400 for lost wages and the title to the trailer. The contract in this case is from 2011, so almost three years ago, correct? Yes. Do you have the original copy of that? Um, I do. Okay, so why don't you start, Ms. Bissnett, and tell me how the two of you met and came to enter into this agreement. Well, we met through a mutual friend, a friend of mine that was one of my horsewomen friends. What do you mean um, by horsewomen friends? Oh, we ride, it's a group of women, and we ride it, horses. Your Honor, it's girls' night. It's, it, it's a girls' night out that we do every month. Uh, the women, we get together. I was new to the area, and that's how we became friends. You found out that she was selling the trailer and you approached her about it? When I found out that she had the horse trailer, I told her, I said, you know, that's a dream of mine as well. But I have to be honest with you about what I could do at this particular time. And we made arrangements on that. We mm -hmm. both agreed on that as to the payments of the minimum payments and what I could do and over a time span. And we both agreed. Why was to this that. your dream trailer? Because I had a little stock trailer and I wanted something really nice. Uh, to go to the sortings and stuff and have my horses in. How many was, horses did you have? At the time, I had two. Okay. And I had planned to get more later on, so that was perfect. It gave me room to, you know, expand, and if I wanted to get a stud, it had a perfect stud break in the middle of it. Okay, so you told her about that, and you wanted to purchase the trailer, and you, the two of you came to an agreement, right? That's correct. And you put that agreement in writing. Yes, we did. And what were the terms? Our agreement was that she would put the stock trailer as a down payment, and then make monthly payments every month, and it was due by the end of the month, of a minimum of $200. What was the total purchase price of the trailer she was buying 13000 OK, so she gave you that stock trailer, $3,000. There's $10,000 left, and she's going to pay $200 a month until a it's A minimum of 200 OK, and it says here the buyer agrees to carry full insurance on the 2005 mm -hmm. horse trailer until full agreement price is paid. Did that happen? No, okay. no, no, it didn't, and I'll tell you why. Okay. I went to DMV and asked them, how, how can I fulfill my part of this agreement? And they told me that she would have to put me on as registered owner, and she would be lien holder, just like when a bank, you purchase a vehicle through a bank, uh, for me to be able to obtain full coverage on it. She did not want to do that. Why so, didn't you want to do what the DMV instructed her to do about getting the trailer registered in her name so she could get that insurance? Well, at that time, we'd already had a few things go south, and I had no trust in her. Um, we had agreed a few days after that I would carry the insurance and she would reimburse me. And that was a verbal agreement. But you can't agreement. carry insurance in her name. We didn't know that for, like I said, the first year and a half. You're suing for three years worth of insurance payments. Yes. She said she didn't pay you for it. You're telling me that the insurance was in your name yes. during this entire time period. Yes. So why is she obligated to pay you for insurance that's in your name? Because she, it's, it's, it's insurance that's on the horse trailer. <laughs> And she agreed to pay the insurance on the Your trailer. Your Honor, can I, no, can no, I say something? Uh, no, um, I'm okay. missing something. You can't. I let apologize. Me, let, me, let me interject here. Because okay. here's what happens. If the insurance is in your name, mm -hmm. she can use, she can drive the trailer, mm -hmm. use her, and the towing vehicle will provide liability insurance for the trailer. But she cannot get full comprehensive coverage on that trailer if the insurance is in your name. Yes. So liability coverage will cover a third party if the trailer's in an accident, but that trailer itself, any physical damage to that trailer, she's not covered because the insurance is in your name. Do you understand? Coming up. I don't want to lose a friendship oh. over this. No. If we can make no. this amicable. All I ever wanted was to get this taken care of. We didn't have to go through all of this. Plaintiff Joanne Bisnett says that her friend broke the contract and is suing for the remaining balance owed on the horse trailer, plus the past insurance costs. Defendant Angela Bradley says that she never used the horse trailer and shouldn't have to pay insurance. She is countersuing for the title and lost wages. Let's move past the insurance. You're also suing for, you say she still owes you $700 on the trailer, and you say that it's not $700. It's $500. It's $500. One provision in, at some point, I, in looking at all of your evidence, at some point after she's made a significant amount of payments, there's a provision in the contract that if she falls behind for two months, mm -hmm. that you can go and get the trailer back. Yes, and I can reclaim the trailer. And so I think this is where the breakdown really happened because after she'd made a significant amount of payments, 
I think upwards of $8,000. She misses a couple of months, and you say you're coming to get the trailer back. Well, Tell actually, me about Your that. Honor... Let okay. me ask you something. Why would you sign a contract that... Because I'm, I'm looking at this, and a lot of people enter into contracts, but this one is particularly one-sided. It favors the seller in this agreement. Because in this contract, it states, at, at any point, if you miss two payments, she can come and reclaim the trailer. It doesn't matter if you've paid half of it. It doesn't matter if you paid $8,000. If you miss two payments, you're agreeing to allow her to come and reclaim the trailer. Whose idea was, to, was it to put that term into the contract? Hers. Uh, okay. And so where covered. did you get the idea to put that term into the contract? Well, that's usually if somebody defaults on a contract. I mean, I've had car payment, you know, bought cars before. I'll be before. honest with you. When oh, I well, saw because it, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious I, because when, when you I never want to enter into a contract where the seller stands to benefit from you defaulting. No, I get that. But and Your Honor, you, when if I, you miss two payments, even though you paid seven thousand, eight thousand dollars, you miss two payments because I saw this in the communication between you. She was going to come and get the trailer back, although you had paid majority of mm -hmm. the money well, towards the trailer. And, and two things, Your Honor. When I signed this contract, like I said, it was a very... It, it, wasn't, it wasn't like doing it with a bank. Mm -mm. I was doing it with a friend. I thought it stated that two months late, like in a regular car, mm -hmm. you know, when you purchase a vehicle, if you're two months late, then they come, they, they can come and get it. I just want to give you a, a little bit of advice here because looking at this contract, um, the terms are, are so skewed here. Yes. There's an entire industry where people design contracts like this, where they are designed to fail. There are some car dealerships in this country, they go to areas, lower income areas, where people don't have a lot of money, and they design these contracts where you pay the notes, and they try to push you into cars that you really can't afford. You pay the notes, and as soon as you default for two months, they come and they take the car back, and right. they sell it to someone else, and they sell these cars over and over again, because that provision says if you miss two car notes, they can come and get the car back. And I saw this provision in your agreement, and it really jumped out. You really have to be careful and yeah. read and understand what you're signing. Just because it's, it's a contract, it doesn't mean that it, it's covering all of the issues. You have to look out for yourself in these contracts and understand what you're signing. And now, Judge Faith rules. Okay, so let's get this resolved today. We're going to get this resolved today. She submitted checks that were deposited. She mm -hmm. has proof of checks deposited mm -hmm. into your bank account, and I added up the totals. Mm -hmm. Out of the total amount that she was supposed to pay you, $10,000, she has paid you everything except $500. So I'm going to order okay. you to repay her the remainder $500. Do you have the title to sign over to her today? May I see the paperwork for the title to the um, trailer? Did they give it back to me? Hold on here. Yes. Okay, I... let me see this. Wow. Both signatures do not need to be yes. on the document, yes. right? Okay, yes. so you can sign this over to her. I'd like you to do that now. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> wow. As far as the insurance, I am denying your claim, plaintiff, for the insurance because you... She did not have an ownership interest to show the insurance company in order for her to get insurance on this trailer. She really couldn't use it, or she would just be taking a chance. If it were damaged, she didn't have insurance coverage. So, um, if you wanted her to pay the insurance, you should have signed the title over to her and kept yourself as a lien holder on the title, but you didn't do that. So, I'm denying your claim for the insurance, but my judgment is for the plaintiff in the amount of $500. And as for your counterclaim, I'm ordering the plaintiff to turn over the title to the trailer to you right now. Are you finished? Um... <laughs> Alrighty, there you go. Okay, hand that to the defendant, please. Ladies, good luck <sighs> with your relationship. No. I, this transaction is finished. I hope that your relationship isn't and that you can possibly be friends again. <laughs> but judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $500, and on your counterclaim, you get the title which she just handed to you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.